All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lupagus show. I am One Bar, joined with Lupagus on this beautiful, beautiful NFL draft eve. Yeah, are you going to be able to sleep tonight? Uh, no, I'm going to be on pins and needles. I'm going to be sweating. All I'm going to be thinking about is players like Christian Fulton and Justin Jefferson dancing in my head. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna be a, it's always a tough night to try to get some rest the night before the draft. You said it. I mean, everything's going through your mind. Who are they going to take? What are they going to do? Who's going to be there? Uh, I'm not even just excited for the Vikings. I'm excited just to see where these guys end up. It's always fun to, uh, you know, just these guys you've been looking at for four months hard uh, to see where, they, where they're going to start their NFL career. So it's, it's a very exciting time. Find it concerning that you're looking at these players hard. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be a – I'm really hoping all this talk about this draft being completely screwed up and projections being way off comes true. I, I'm in the mood for a good old messed up draft. Well, it's going to be – I think it's going to remind us of the 2011 draft and there was that strike year and all those quarterbacks went early. Maybe there will be some kind of a position that will go early because of this, um, you know, the online-only visits and everybody getting their information from the combine and senior bowl. So, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But we'll talk about something that later because Rick Spielman did address some of those topics in his presser. But before we get into draft talk, there is some huge former Vikings news that's been – Roaming around the internet today, Percy Harvin. He is uh, in great shape, and he is itching to make a comeback, an NFL comeback. Should the Vikings, they do need a wide receiver. They do need a kick returner. Should they be giving Percy Harvin a call to see if he wants to return to Minnesota? Uh, you know, there's another former Viking that's stayed in shape and always has wanted to make a comeback, and his name's Herschel Walker. And you know what? His phone does not ring. And I oh. think Percy Harvin is going to be in the same category. I mean, I was surprised to see that he's still only 31. He retired early. He's probably got something he left in the hey, He never retired. He never filed those papers. Well, whatever he did, he stopped playing early. Um, you know, in a fantasy, fantasy land, it would be very fun if Percy Harvin all of a sudden came back to the Vikings. <laughs> but it's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, supposedly he's better mentally. He's better physically. He's, he, you know, he, he wants it again. I loved watching Percy Harvin play when he was, you know, the first couple of years with the Vikings. God, he was fun. Um, yeah. But he also, no. I think he threw a teammate in a garbage can or something. There was some rumors about that. Um, yeah, I don't think he was very some... friendly to, to Brad Childress either. I think there were some yeah. serious issues yeah. there. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think he ends up in purple, but I could see him end up in the league somewhere. I mean, his agent will have to do some work getting a team to sign him, but I think it could be done. Um, I think he'll get a shot. Uh, I hope he does. I'll be pulling for him. It'll be fun to watch. Um, like you said, Percy Harvin was very fun to watch as a Viking four years. Uh, and I'll always be thankful for him for all those draft picks he gave us from Seattle. So, Oh yeah. I always be thankful for the, when we took him and you blindsided me with that tackle when I when tore my underpants off. I wanted Michael Orr. I wanted him so bad. Yeah. You broke a ceiling tile. You got anger issues. You do. All right. So Rick Spielman was, uh, did a little virtual, press conference yesterday with multiple members of the media. Uh, I watched that recently and I got, here's some takeaways from this. He actually said uh, some things that were kind of interesting. First of all, he didn't say the Vikings planned or wanted to trade Stefan Diggs and the offer was just kind of presented to them. Is that something you're buying or do you think they were kind of, uh, do you think Rick was making some calls about Diggs? Oh, I think, I think he would have traded him for a expired can of spam at that point. I absolutely think they were dealing him. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't get into uh, what happened in the season, but he just, uh, you know how he is. He's very slick. Uh, he also said the Vikings have had offers to move up and down the board. Uh, what was really interesting is that he made it seem like 25 was a pick they would be willing to move because he even said if there's six or seven names there on the board that they would definitely look to move down. And I think that's key. Um, when you factor in the cornerbacks that could be there, the offensive tackles, I think those make up the six or seven names, and I could definitely see the Vikings sliding down to 25. How about you? Yeah, I would be more surprised if they didn't slide down after that pick. I think they stay at 22, get the top guy on their board, and then when 25 comes, they're, uh, they're moving back. But the big question will be is if anybody wants to move up, I think a lot of people are going to be in the same boat as us where they won't mind trading back in this draft and just getting some players. So they got to find that trading partner. We need some guys – to slide like a Jordan Love or somebody like that. Somebody wants to come up and snap. Well, it's not even just Jordan Love. I can see Jalen Hurts being a target here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up going in the first round. 
And like, you know, look at the Detroit Lions who maybe want to get ahead of the Colts um, to jump up and get that quarterback. Um, yeah, I could see him definitely making a move, slide down to the early second round. And you're going to probably see a guy on the board there that you would have seen at 25. So the fact that he said that and the way he said it, I think was very telling. Which means that we will stay at 25 and just take like Ezra Cleveland and hearts will be broken. Ugh, I'm, God, on te- I'm on team trade back, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, it depends the way the board goes. If there's someone there that, you know, we you never know who's going to fall. There's talk with Jerry Judy having a, new, a knee issue right now. Um, Mekhi Becton with the flag drug test. I mean, you never know who's going to fall. People fall every single year. So uh, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, if, if, it, you know, if it goes the way we expect it to, I would hope we move down. But you got to have that partner to dance with. You can't dance by yourself in the corner. I've done it before. How did, how did it pan out? Not good. It was lonely. And you know what? Like you said, nailed it. Every year. Last year, Jawan Taylor. Yeah. Guy, guy went in round two. I mean, even the announcers were just shocked the whole time. There, there was never a reason. Jawan Taylor's in this draft. And, you know, look at Larry Tunzel when he had the gas mask pitchers going well, during that draft. Valid. I mean, he had a reason to slide. I know. He still went in the first round. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, he also talked about the depth of a wide receiver. He, he, you know, he – he kind of went on length about how deep of a class this is, how you can find guys down the board, mid rounds, late rounds. So um, obviously he's not going to show all his cards, but the fact that he said that, it kind of makes you wonder if they're not looking at a wide receiver early. But again, you know, if there's one top on the board there, I think they would still take him. But he did kind of go out of his way to praise the depth of this wide receiver class. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to come to grips that I really don't think the Vikings are going to take a first round receiver, unless one of those top three fall. I've, uh, I've prepared myself that they're obvious. They're, there's no doubt about it. They're taking a corner in round one, and then I think they go. I, I just don't think they're going to go wide receiver. I think that's going to be a total round two pick, and my Justin Jefferson dreams, even Denzel Mims, are just. They're gone. Well, I, I think you got, you got to stay true to your board. If it's Mims or Jefferson, the top of your board, and they're there at 25, then I think you got to pull the trigger. Don't just not take them because it's a deep class. You never know when a run's going to start. There could be a run in the round, you know, late first round, early round two, or all of a sudden you're up at 58 and there's nobody there to take. So um, stay true to your board. That's all I'm saying. But I do get it. It's a deep class. You can find help all throughout this draft. A couple other things he talked about. He was asked about the virtual draft. They did that mock draft yesterday with all the GMs. He said the the biggest concern is that if a storm comes through and someone's connection gets jacked up, um, he said the biggest thing it could affect would be trades, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, He said teams might be willing to trade earlier. So you might see that trade come out, you know, a couple minutes into a pick. No one's going to want to wait. He said there is actually backup options. Like there's three guys. If someone's internet goes out, like there's a each team has like three guys that they can fall back on. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this pans out tomorrow uh, with this whole virtual draft thing. Yeah, and uh, you know what? If they don't have about seven backup internet uh, options for this, then uh, shame on them. They do not deserve a pick, um, and uh, yeah, he, they should just be skipped. He actually said the IT guys have more pressure on them tomorrow than he does. So. Yeah, I bet they do. Yeah. A couple of interesting tidbits. He said, um, Mike Zimmer, he, he stressed how he has specific things he looks for in cornerbacks. Uh, he said that there's some guys who will get drafted. The Vikings will not have interest in because they don't fit the Mike Zimmer mold. So uh, when you think about that, you think about the, the height, the length, the speed. Um, so that's something that definitely that he said that I think was very, uh, it was something you need to uh, think about and keep in mind. Yeah. It's terrifying. Um, yeah, and he also talked about late, after the draft that, you know, the Vikings, he said, um, without them doing the, the team camps, right, they don't have to get to that 90, was it 93, 96 player number. So he expects them to look, you know, to sign veterans, not, not just the undrafted free agent, but veterans may make some trades even after the draft. So uh, there's a good shot here that the Vikings could be active. We could see some veterans come in after the draft. Good. I hope we get some veterans in that secondary, damn it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's some guys out there. Darkies Denard, that that contract signed with Jaguars didn't pan out. Drake Kirkpatrick's out there. Morris Claiborne, Logan Ryan still hasn't signed. 
Um, so there's a lot of corners available who, if the Vikings don't find someone who can start for them in the draft, they could definitely find an old crusty free agent. And a big part of that is the Anthony Harris situation, What whatever they figure out there. I mean, that's going to either free up a bunch of money or we're not going to have any. So uh, I don't think they're done signing vets. Like you said, there's still some very quality guys out there. And uh, I would love to see him in purple. Not Percy Harvin, though. Well, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. All right, so we're getting close to the draft. This is when a lot of rumors start flying around. A lot of prospects be getting buzzed late in the in, in the process here. Uh, who you got? Who you been hearing? Uh, been linked to the Vikings. We, they've met with virtually met with them before the combine. Who are getting some late Viking smoke? Late the Viking scoop? Uh, I yeah. won't say it's late, but just some guys that they've met with that uh, pique my interest. I mean, Ben Barch. They just had a virtual. Um, meeting with him, uh, great fit, third round guy probably. Would love to see him in purple. Um, when you look at the list of guys they've met with, uh, you can clearly tell that they're uh, going for the guys um, at their big needs. I mean, offensive tackle is huge. Uh, offensive line is huge. I'll surprise how many safety they safeties they've met with. Um, who do you got? Well, a couple of guys stick out. Uh, Mackay Beckton, the fact that they had a recent virtual meeting with him. Um, you know, he had that flag drug test, whatever that means. Um, maybe they think there's a chance he falls down, maybe not to 22, but to a point where they can trade up and get him for not too much. Um, Antoine Winslow Jr., flat out said he recently talked to the Vikings, which would be sweet. Uh, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I know he's not the biggest guy out there, but he's – he would be such a perfect fit, not only for what he can do on the field, but he's got the bloodlines, play for the Gophers. He'd be a fan favorite. He'd be, I mean, he'd sell a lot of jerseys. It would, it would make a lot of sense on multiple levels for a team to bring him in. Uh, a couple of guys that really, I, I, I wasn't, I was shocked about this one. Antonio Gibson, the running back wide receiver from Memphis. The Vikings, I think they met with him at the combine or senior bowl or something. And then they also uh, visited with him again. Uh, this guy, Two things that come to mind. Either you use this guy as a gadget player where you have him, you know, Cordero Patterson, Percy Harvin in the backfield, out in the slot, and maybe have him as your kick returner. And then if you aren't able to sign Delvin Cook, then maybe you have some insurance there. Otherwise, I don't know why the Vikings would look at any running backs right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he does multiple things. Maybe he's going to be their uh... – be their little uh, Swiss Army knife out there, which I wouldn't be completely opposed to. Um, one guy, another guy they met with, uh, met at the Combine and a virtual visit, is a guy that has been heavily linked to the Vikings, is Christian Fulton. So that gets me a little excited in my parts. Yeah, and we talk about, like, well, it's people instead of the Mike Zimmer corner. I mean, Christian Fulton fits that mold to a T. He's got the height. He's got the long arms, the long limbs. He's, he's fast. He can, you know, press cover. So I, I think he screams the Mike Zimmer corner. If he's there at 22, to me, he's the best fit, and he's probably worth that pick. Again, who knows? You, you don't know the way that this draft's going to unfold. I've seen Christian Fulton going to mocks as early as, like, 16, and I've seen him in, like, round three. So it, it's just – it's so up in the air this year. A couple other guys that uh, I thought was interesting the Vikings met with. One I, I'm not real thrilled about is Jordan Elliott, the defensive tackle from Missouri. The reason why is, to me, he's kind of more like a Jalil Johnson – where he is, you know, the Vikings need that interior pass rusher, and he is more of a mix where he can uh, he can stuff the run, and he can also, invite, you know, provide some interior pressure. He's not I – I want a guy who's strictly just that interior pass rusher for the Vikings. I want that to be their specialty. Uh, to me, Jordan Ely is too – he's too much in the middle for my liking. And then another guy is Robert Hunt, the, the guard, Louisiana. This guy is Love just – that mean. guy. Yeah, he is so mean. He doesn't just block somebody. He destroys them, and he, he loves destroying them. If they're not on their back, I think he feels like he failed. I really do. Man. Yeah, uh, another thing to note, they've met with a couple of very high-profile prospects, too, that are probably going to be top 10 picks, and that's Tristan Wirfs from Iowa and C.J. Henderson. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. It's very interesting that they would take the time to meet with those guys. I mean, those are two guys that would – almost be a miracle to fall to either 22 or 25. So uh, there must be some intrigue there. Uh, Cam Danzler, cornerback, uh, they met with him. Um, had that, ran up about an 8 7 40 at the Combine, which hurt That's his great. stock a little bit. He would be a guy that I'd love to see them snap up in like round three or round four. 
Uh, one guy that they've also showed quite a bit of interest in that uh, I don't like is Ezra Cleveland. Um, they've met with him. Uh, one thing that's surprising is they really haven't met with many line. I think they met with like three linebackers. Like I don't think that's surprising. I mean, where are they going to go? Are well, they, they just don't have any depth at linebacker. You got Demarcus Gates. You got Cameron Smith. You got Ben Gideon. Oh, set. I'm sorry. I owe you an apology. We have plenty of depth at that position. We are set. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they take a linebacker if they're sitting there like around six and there's just nowhere else to go. I don't know. I. To well, me, another, I, I, another surprising part was they met with a couple quarterbacks, um, but nobody really uh, – I mean, they met with Jake Fromm. Yep. Um, there's no Jalen Hurts meetings. There's no, uh, there's no Jacob Eason. So – um, I'm really thinking that quarterback is not very high on the list. If Jake Fromm is there uh, in a round that he shouldn't be, they could maybe take him. But um, one guy they did meet with that, that will be a later on guy that, that gets me a little excited is James Morgan. Yeah, when you said about Jake Fromm, I, you know, I think it, you know, maybe you look at that second, third round pick or if he somehow makes it to the fourth round, that's what they think about it. You, I mean, he's smart. He's not going to wow you physically. He can't just – you know, his arm's not going to impress you. He can't really move in the pocket. I mean, not in the pocket. He can't He can't pick up yards on the ground rushing. Um, to me, he's kind of like Kirk Cousins. I think he's he's the perfect Kirk Cousins backup. He's Kirk Cousins version two. And, uh, you know, maybe Vikings bring him in. I think he could push Sean Manning to be the backup. Worst case, he's your number three. Let him sit for a while, marinate until he's ready to take over. But well, if if we take Jake Fromm in round two, I'm not going to drink my beer. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to swallow the can in hopes I choke on it. <laughs> I, I hope they don't take him round two. I think they take him. Yeah, three or four is what I'm three looking at. Three or four, at. three maybe. I'd be all right with it. Four would be fantastic. Uh, former Vike, you already mentioned Winfield. They have met with J.R. Reed, Jake Reed's kid from Georgia safety. That would be a that would be a fun pick in round like five or six. I'd be. I all got him. That. I, I got him written in in Sharpie going to the Vikings around five. God, I wonder. I wouldn't be mad one bit. Yeah. Um, one last guy I've seen the Vikings link to is the wide receiver from SMU, James Prochet. Uh, he's you know he's a demon working on the slot. Pressed at the Senior Bowl, the Vikings met with him down there. They had a virtual visit with this guy too. Uh, and Rick Spielman said it. He, you know he's not looking just at early round wide receiver. He's looking at mid round late guys. So I mean. Crochet is probably going to fall. I would say anywhere from three to six. I don't, I mean, it's a wide range, but I did just see the, you know, a lot of these prospects are going to have a, you know, one team's going to love them. One team's not going to be so high on them. It depends what you're looking for. So I think Crochet is a guy who's, who's probably going to be working on the slot in the NFL. Yeah. I love that guy. I'd love for the Vikings to snap him up and even like round four. Yeah. So, all right. You got anybody else? No, no, that's it. Yeah. And again, you know, you know, I don't know how much to read in some of this. It's just the Vikings are going to do their homework on a bunch of guys, and you just want to be ready because you never know how the how the board's going to fall and who's going to be there and when they're going to be there. So you don't want to ever not know when a guy falls. Uh, all right, so the surprising move here. I have three questions for one bar that you don't even know are coming. Um, yeah, I'm all scared about this. I don't know if I'm prepared. I might might have to pass on some of these questions. No, they're not. They're not any real big brain busters here. More opinions than anything. Oh, I got opinions. What, what do you got? All right. Do you think it's possible the Vikings could take two cornerbacks in the first round? Cornerbacks? Yes. Uh, no. I'm going to say no, but I could see them taking a corner at 22, trading out at 25 into the second round, and taking another corner. I could see them taking back-to-back -back corners. But two round one corners, I man, unless two stallions are there, like if they could get Christian Fulton and and Jeff Gladney, maybe. But uh, I can't see it. We 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 gotta we gotta address that offensive line. Yeah, one one thing to remember though, I mean, Mike Hughes is injury prone. Holton Hill could get suspended, you know, if he farts. Oh yeah, they they don't have any corners. I'm I'm I'm, I'm with yeah. you there. I mean, it wouldn't shock me. What I I mean, what I'd be more. Uh, happy to see is going with a corner and then getting like Antoine Winfield Jr., who could be a corner until oh. he's ready to play safety. I could see that being a realistic move for the Vikings. And I actually, I've always loved it when a team will just address one need and they just hit it hard in the draft, hit it early. Um, for some reason, I've always enjoyed when teams do that. But I, I could see them doing a corner and then getting, if we got a corner like a Fulton and then a Winfield at 25, or if we traded back a few picks and got Winfield, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be sweet. 
All right, here's the second question from one bar. Uh, lately on Twitter, it, it seems a lot of people are very happy with the combination at 22 and 25 of Josh Jones, the offensive tackle from Houston, and then A.J. Terrell, the cornerback from Clemson. If this were to happen, how would you feel about this? And uh, we're, staying at, we're staying at 22 and 25 and getting them? People are excited about this combination. No, I'm not excited about that. I, 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 I would be fine with Josh Jones – as long as the cornerback we got was a Gladney or a Fulton or we traded back. But I'm, I'm not an A.J. Terrell guy um, at all in round one. If we trade back and get him, fine. But that makes me nauseous. Like Josh Jones would be the okay pick if we got a stud corner. If we got Josh Jones and A.J. Terrell or like a, even a Jalen Johnson combo of Josh Jones makes me want to jump out my window. Yeah, this would make me absolutely vomit everywhere. I would, I would be able to as depressed as I was when they took Troy Williamson. Uh, <laughs> this would make me sick. It would make me absolutely sick. And I'm not going to be the guy who goes on Twitter and be like, oh, man, what are you – you never know, but this would be horrible. If, if, we did a, if we did a combo, like this is messing up your combo, but if we did two corners in round one and the second one was A.J. Terrell, I would be fine with it. But not, yeah. not with Josh Jones. I just don't think there's any value with, with that combination there. Um, you got to trade down if that's what you're going with. If, it, if it's, you know, 28 and 34, that looks a lot better than 22 and 25. Yeah. I still don't want them to be our first players. players. All right. One last question for you. This will be the hardest one to ask you. I'm so scared. All right. Give me one. And maybe you need a sip of beer first. I don't know. Do you? Yeah. Need a sip? Well, All it depends. Right. All right. Give me one very under the radar name the Vikings could take in round one. Under the radar, woo wee! Yeah. Patrick Queen, LSU linebacker. Really? Wow. Adding him to the mix of Kendricks and Barr. Uh, Queen is a, is an absolute stud. You can play him inside. You can play him outside. And those three guys would be pretty pretty silly to watch. And he. Very uh, well, he probably will be on the board. He's gonna go right around that area. You think he'd be nicknamed the Vikeen? Queen? Yeah, I do. Instantly by us, and it wouldn't catch on. Wow. Patrick Queen. All right. Queenie. Queenie. That, that's uh, that would be shocking. That would be under the radar and a pants dropper. Yeah, I was going for more just under the radar and unexpected and yeah. No, you nailed it. You did good. You answered the three questions like a man. All right. All right, that's all I got. So, uh, you got anything else you want to address before? No, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be hot and heavy all weekend, all draft weekend, dropping videos on the guys we draft, our thoughts on the the day's work that the Vikings put in. So make sure to tune in, subscribe, like the video. Yeah, it's here. It's the best time of the year. Uh, we have something we wait for every single year. Nothing better than the NFL draft, especially now with nothing else going on. Uh, is it something we all need? And I can't wait. It's gonna be. Very hard to sleep tonight. Yes. NyQuil. Drink some NyQuil. I'm going to. I can't. It does the opposite for me. So Too bad for you. All right. Well, you're laying there in bed after you slam your, your NyQuil. I want you to think about this fact. Male pigs' orgasms can last from 30 minutes to an hour and a half. Deal. <laughs> <laughs>